Welcome in on this Thursday. I'm Elizabeth Cook. Looking live at Joint Base Andrews, we are waiting on President Biden to arrive there. He's headed to South America for the APEC summit. But we're also watching for a key meeting on the sidelines over the weekend. Plus, CBS News projects Republicans will keep control of the House, what it means for President-elect Donald Trump during his second term. This is CBS News 24-7. The future of the Trump administration coming into clearer focus today. These 16 people have been tapped to join Trump's cabinet since he won the election last week. They all need to be confirmed by the Republican-controlled Senate before being then sworn into their new roles. Now, many of the names on that list remain loyal to the president-elect over the last four years, including the highly controversial Matt Gates. Trump sent shockwaves through Congress by naming the, the former Florida congressman as his pick for attorney general. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now from West Palm Beach, Florida with the very latest. Caitlin, several lawmakers have spoken out following that announcement. Gates, Gates of course, is being investigated by the House Ethics Committee over allegations of sexual misconduct, illicit drug use, and bribery, among other things. He was also part of a sex trafficking investigation by the Justice Department that he has been tapped to lead. Can you walk us through why Gates was Donald Trump's pick? Hey, it's great. The satirical news publication The Onion says it purchased Alex Jones Infowars. The Onion won a bidding war for the company, backed by the families who lost their children in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Connecticut. Jones owes more than $1 billion in damages to those families for calling the mass shooting a hoax. The family said the purchase will put an end to what they call a misinformation machine. To San Francisco now, where later on this morning, the man accused of fatally stabbing Cash App founder Bob Lee is set to take the stand for cross-examination one day after making his first appearance in his trial. Nima Momeni gave his side of the story yesterday, saying he had no intention to hurt Lee, but things turned violent after what he described as a bad joke. Momeni recalled Lee wanting to go to a strip club. In response, Momeni made a joke about preferring to spend time with family instead. The tech consultant said that's when Lee went from zero to 100 and pulled a knife on him. A scuffle happened, which led to Lee's two stab wounds in his chest. Omeni said he walked away without knowing Lee's fatal injuries and then tossed the knife away from Lee. To Brazil now, where video shows bomb squads outside the Brazil uh, outside of Brazil's Supreme Court after a man set off explosives in front of the building. Officers found that man dead last night with an explosive device attached to him. People inside the Supreme Court evacuated. The attack stirs up security concerns five days ahead of the G20 summit when global leaders will meet. Video out of Spain shows another round of severe flooding battering the coast there. This is about 400 miles down the coast from Valencia, where historic floods killed more than 200 people just two weeks ago. Thousands evacuated the area as downpours dumped a month's worth of rainfall in just one hour. Now, in Valencia, communities facing a colossal cleanup effort now also bracing for even more rain. That area just is not getting a break. And Jess, I know you have some big news coming from the tropics. Oh yeah, we're right now keeping a very close eye on Tropical Depression 19. It's expected okay. to strengthen as we head into the coming days to Tropical Storm Sarah. Now mind you, we are still in hurricane season and I know it's hard to believe, especially as we get closer and closer to Thanksgiving. But the end of hurricane season is November 30th and we are still days out right now, keeping a very close eye on that system. You'll see it in just a second as the sun starts to rise. This is within the past 24 hours. Right there you see just south of the Yucatan Peninsula, that big cluster of clouds. That's starting to get a lot more cyclonic activity and this is where it's at right now. Tropical Depression 19 continuing to move to the west just near the Yucatan Peninsula as we head into the next 24 hours. We'll watch that strengthen potentially into Tropical Storm Sarah. Right now, max sustained winds are around 35 miles per hour. We are expected to see it hit closer to around 45 miles per hour, closer into our Saturday forecast. Why are we talking about this, though? Well, right now, long range models are showing this exact system to actually change directions and potentially move up closer to the Gulf of Mexico as we head into the coming days into early next week. 
so I will keep a very close eye on that. But let's change gears and let's head back up to our country. Now, Washington, Oregon, we have been dealing with a crazy week with heavy rain, wind, tornado activity just along the Oregon coast earlier this week. And another foot of snow is expected in the Sierra and all throughout the northern Cascades from this exact same system that continues to wring out more moisture for our friends all throughout the Pacific Northwest heading into our weekend forecast. So today alone, the severe weather outlook just shows scattered thunderstorms stretched from the Bay Area in California all the way up into Seattle Tacoma area and we'll continue to keep a close eye on that as we wrap up this week because our long range models are showing drier than normal conditions on the back end over in that region. Back to you. All right, Jess, thank you. And you're also following something happening in the tropics to some unsettled weather there. You know, it's wild to think we're in November. We're gearing up for Thanksgiving yeah. and yet we're still talking about hurricane activity. Crazy. Now, just south, closer to the Yucatan Peninsula, we are keeping a very, very close eye on Tropical Depression 19 that potentially could be named or the next name storm. It would be Sierra or Sarah as we head into the coming days. A tropical storm Sarah right around the corner. And as you take a look at the Yucatan Peninsula, this is in the overnight hours last night. Watch the sun rise over America and all throughout North America into the early morning hours. It's a mess of clouds that's still starting to form right now, but it's gaining strength currently as it hits some warmer sea surface temperatures just to the south of Cuba, where keep in mind the last storm knocked out power to millions throughout that island. Now this system right here is causing a lot of thunderstorm activity throughout the Yucatan Peninsula. And why are we talking about this so much? Well, as it starts to gain strength and we watch it move its way closer to Mexico, currently at 35 miles per hour, starting to strengthen to about 45 miles per hour. It's going to stay relatively weak with about 10 to 20 inches, though, still expected in areas like Honduras into early next week's forecast. And as we take a look at the long range models, mind you, this is so far out, it will potentially, it could at least enter the Gulf of Mexico. And if it does that, it's going to hit some warmer sea surface temperatures. And there is a chance that this potentially could move its way over into states like Florida, but that's still far out. We are keeping a very close eye on those models. It is it's important to note, though, we are still in hurricane season, and this is definitely possible to see it impact Americans as well. Yeah, it's crazy to see how many hurricanes there have been so far this year. Hopefully they're winding down. We're almost out of it. We are right around the corner. Tell Santa Claus he's got to talk to Mother Nature and calm the skies. <laughs> We've got to get reindeers through the skies. That's right. Your kids are watching. Uh, they are. It's very important. Santa always manages to save the day. That's though. right. Always. Nicely done, ladies. Good to be with you today. <laughs> All right. When CBS News 24-7 continues, we will go live to France. Concerns that... Scenes in Paris could turn like scenes in Amsterdam. Israeli soccer fans there and major push there to keep the peace with police with boots on the ground. We're back in just a minute.